a lot of times when we um, come across prospects, um, you know, it's the same story. It's like, hey, I've tried SEO, you know, I spent thousands of dollars, you know, I never got anywhere and I kind of feel like I've just been taken advantage of, right? And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to write a book just to kind of uh, stop that pattern. Um, you know, I wanted to educate and empower attorneys um, to not only understand like SEO and how to hold people accountable, but more importantly, um, to stop them from getting taken advantage of. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Answering Legal's Everything Except the Law podcast. As always, I am your host, Nick Worker. If this is your first time tuning in, this is the podcast where we share expert advice on all the parts of running a law firm that attorneys weren't exactly trained for back in law school. Now, today on the podcast, we'll be diving back into one of my personal favorite topics, which is SEO. Uh, and my guest today is someone who is extremely knowledgeable and passionate about that, to passionate about that topic. He spent the last two decades reverse engineering the Google algorithm, and this past summer released a book called Law Firm SEO, in which he shares proven strategies that he's used to earn more than $500 million in new cases for his clients. Jason Hennessy is with me here today. Jason, it's great to talk to you. Hey, Nick. Thanks so much for having me on the show, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, you know, my, my first love was SEO, um, so... For, for those who aren't really familiar with, with that, can you let us uh, know more about yourself and your SEO background? Yeah. Uh, so for those that are listening that doesn't know what SEO stands for, it's just search engine optimization. Started in the late 90s. I'd say like, you know, like 96, 97 is kind of, but, you know, I don't think there was actually a term called SEO back then. Um, it was just called getting traffic to a website. Um, and I think the term was coined in like, you know, maybe like 99. Um, I started in 2001. So I've been doing this for most of my adult life. And I've been in the legal marketing space since about 2008, working uh, with attorneys from across the country, from all different practice areas, from mass towards personal injury, criminal defense, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so we have an agency, it's called Hennessy Digital. Uh, we're about 130 full-time employees and we work with wow. some of the largest law firms in the country. That is a lot of employees for an agency. So, I mean, kudos, that's impressive. Uh, Thank you. So I wanna ask because there's always, there's always new trends and new things that come up in SEO. So what are some of the things that you've really noticed um, that have been sort of like the new SEO trends that have grabbed your attention uh, this past year? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when you look at like SEO trends, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, Google's relying a lot more on like user signals now, um, whereas in the past, um, you know, there are things that you could do to manipulate search, um, you know, dating back to, you know, stuffing keywords and keyword density and putting white text on a white background, right? So there's all the tricks that you can do back in the day. Uh, nowadays, Google's a lot more sophisticated and they're relying on actually how people interact with your website and your content. And so, uh, you know, writing um, with the intention of satisfying the, uh, you know, the searcher's intent, right? Um, and so I think, uh, you know, that's really what it comes down to these days is, uh, is satisfying the intent of somebody that's doing a search and then making sure that you've got all of your fundamentals kind of taken care of with technical SEO and building popularity and, you know, continuing to kind of publish content on a regular basis. I love to talk about search intent. Mm -hmm. um, and semantically, uh, I was taught this lesson like a while ago is um, it's really easy to kind of just conjure up keywords that you want to go after. Mm -hmm. and, and this was something I learned as, as a, as a beginner was, you know, uh, so I run an answering service, right? Um, one, one of the things that I would love to go after is like, uh, uh, let me legal answering, right? Yep. It sounds, it sounds so legit. I run an answering service for, for lawyers, but if I were to go after that keyword, legal answering, 
what mm-hmm. people are really looking for is answers to their legal questions. And hmm. so if I were to purposefully optimize my website for that keyword and start ranking for it, people would come to my website and ask me all sorts of questions that I'm not qualified to answer. Sure. Um, and one of the ways that I learned that was uh, this guy, I went to like a, like a, what do you call it? Like a conference, I guess. Yep. And he was explaining that he was in charge of, I think it was getting traffic for Walmart or a big retailer for TVs. Mm-hmm. So he goes, he does a bunch of research and he says, oh my goodness, there's 150,000 searches every day for TV. I'm just going to put so much resources and advertising and, and campaigns and this for TV. Sure. And what happens when you type in TV is people are looking to stream TV. It's like Netflix shows up, Hulu mm-hmm. shows up, streaming services. So this guy wasted all this time and he had to learn that you really want to match the content you're putting out to the intent of the searcher, not just what you're trying to get across. So I, I love talking about search intent. Yeah. And then the Google's, uh, you know, sophisticated to kind of figure that out algorithmically. Right. So when somebody does a search for like, just let's use the example that you gave there, right. Where it's, um, you know, people are looking for, uh, answers to like legal questions, right. Instead of an answering service, um, you know, if if somebody does that search and and you're ranking, Google may kind of experiment by putting your website in like the second or third position. But if enough people click on it and only stay there for seven seconds and then they go back to Google, Google's measuring that time. And so the more people that are not staying on your website and going back to Google is telling Google algorithmically that you're not satisfying the intent of that search. And so they're going to boost you to page two or page three and move other people up. Right. So. Exactly. So even if you're dishonestly trying to gain traffic in that way, you're, you're, you're really not doing yourself any favors. You're sort of wasting your time. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I want to talk about your book. So you released the book this past summer. It's called Law Firm SEO. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that project, the inspiration behind it? Uh, give us yeah. like some juice. What's inside it? Yeah. So, I, you know, writing a book has always been a bucket list, um, you know, and figuring out what to write it about was uh, pretty obvious. I mean, since I spent, uh, you know, the past 20 years kind of doing SEO, I figured, why not kind of write a book about um, doing SEO for law firms? Because that's kind of like what our business does. Um, and to be honest with you, what inspired me to write the book, um, as you probably know, and as a lot of people kind of understand is, you know, SEO is very confusing. Um, there's good practitioners and there's also, um, dubious practitioners that are in the industry. Um, and you know, a lot of times when we, um, come across prospects, um, you know, it's the same story. It's like, Hey, I've tried SEO, you know, I spent thousands of dollars, you know, I never got anywhere. And I kind of feel like I've just been taken advantage of. Right. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to write a book just to kind of uh, stop that pattern. Um, you know, I wanted to educate and empower attorneys um, to not only understand like SEO and how to hold people accountable, but more importantly, um, to stop them from getting taken advantage of by people like me. Right. And so uh, that was really the the reason uh, for writing the book. Um, and, you know, based on some of the feedback and the reviews that I've got, you know, I think it's been mission accomplished. Um, you know, and I think anybody that reads the book, uh, whether or not they want to hire their own in-house team, it does that. It teaches you how to do that. Or if you want to just hire an agency to kind of do it for you. But more importantly, how to make sure you're holding your agency accountable to getting the results that you're paying them to get. That's awesome. And uh, I, I, was, I was also taught this by, by a mentor a long time ago is that one person in your company or your business or however big or small you are, one person does not do SEO. SEO is an organizational, organizationally wide uh, sort of attitude and approach to marketing, right? There's a lot of things that you can do that can sort of mess up your SEO. So if no, if, if everybody's not really on the same wavelength and moving in the same direction, it, it you know, a lot of your effort can get wasted. Um, yeah. So speaking of that, I like to, I, I love funny stories. So I like, I like fails. I'm one of those people who thought that, uh, 
you know, uh, what's that show called? Ridiculousness, America's yes. Funniest Home Videos. I like to watch uh -huh. people fall. I don't know. As long as I know you're okay, I, I don't know. Slip and falls just make me laugh, man. Um, <laughs> so what are some of the most, I want to say frustrating SEO mistakes that you see uh, law firms making these days? And, and if you have any like funny stories, uh, yeah. I would appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think the mistakes that I see people make is, um, is, you know, a, you know, hiring like a web developer um, to kind of develop a new website, asking them, by the way, do you also do SEO? Mm. And then they just say yes, right? Just because they're not going to say no. Um, and then you just kind of pay them to dev design and develop a website and they kind of go in and do some, you know, some basic like title tags and stuff. And people think that SEO is done now, right? Um, couldn't be further from the truth. SEO, like you said, is a very long-term ongoing strategy uh, that takes uh, time and attention from not just one person, but you know your whole company, right? Um, so that's one mistake. The other mistake that I see people make is um, you know you you continue to hear the the words content is king and you need to be publishing content. And that's one thing, you know, and so I often see attorneys that um, hire writers to go out and just write blog posts, you know, and they pay them, you know, $50 to publish a post without any kind of clue about what they're writing about. There's mm -hmm. no strategy. There's no direction, right? They're just publishing content. Um, you know, I often tell my clients, hey, you know, if you've done that, hey, there can be problems because who knows if they're plagiarizing content from other law firms, right? And you're getting penalized because duplicate content or, all, you know, worse, it's like, you know, read your own content and would you hire yourself, right? Based on kind of what you're putting out yep. there, you know, um, a funny story is talking about semantics. Um, we recently got a lead which then turned into a client for one of our, our clients. And um, when we went back and we, we started to, you know, look at the data points and, and, and understand like, how did this lead come to us? Um, it was really funny. So the search term that they put in um, was ambulance chaser lawyer oh near me, right? <laughs> that was the term that they put in, right? Oh, man. They're looking for a lawyer. And so they didn't know what to search. And they typed in ambulance chaser lawyer near me, right? And so, but the funny thing is that, you know, obviously, like our site doesn't have any words like ambulance chaser on the site at all, right? But Google semantically associates ambulance chaser with lawyer. And so therefore we turned into a lead, which then turned into a case. And so I thought that was funny. Great job, Google, man. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I don't know why, but this just reminded. So I'm a big uh, like YouTube. I like to listen to stuff while I'm working. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to um, a black hat SEO mm -hmm. thing just because I like to hear it. You know, not that I would ever do this, but this guy gave a talk. He was Scottish. I don't, I don't remember his name, but he had a thick Scottish accent. And I found that very interesting too. It's probably my buddy, Craig. Is it? Do you <laughs> know? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, he's talking about, he was in charge of doing uh, SEO for, uh, I forget what chain of hotels. Okay. So he's doing SEO for hotels and, and he calls up like the competitor and he says, I'll, I'll give you a free SEO audit. You know, like, just let me check over your stuff. See if your agency is doing any, you don't have to hire me. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to do a free audit. Mm -hmm. So he gets all their information, log in, he's checking everything out and he goes into their, their, uh, their Google, my business, which now is called like Google business profile, whatever, yeah. if, if we want to be correct, uh, goes in there and changes the little website button on the, on the business listing to his clients. Affiliate. Yeah website uh -huh. Uh -huh. and he gets a ton of hits for this thing and people yeah. are trying to oh my i was like dude you're gonna get sued and go to jail for that like <laughs> there's, that's gotta be illegal in some way shape or form he's like yeah you wouldn't believe the amount of hits i, I was like okay yeah that that's guy's my crazy buddy. that's my buddy craig campbell for sure <laughs> and you should let's tag him on this <laughs> kudos man i hope that worked out for you and and i hope let's oh god that was I, I heard that. I was like, oh, my God, I don't have the the gumption to ever try something <laughs> like that. We will be right back with the show after this short message. Who doesn't want to be a successful attorney with a busy practice, but still have that life? Having those lunch breaks, playing golf, going on vacation. 
Answering Legal allows you to. My name is Laura Pfeiffer Battalora. I'm an attorney, founding member of the Battalora Law Group. Our headquarters is in Brooklyn, but we represent people all over the state of New York. The process of getting started with Answering Legal couldn't have been easier. It was so seamless. They're so efficient, the message will pop up on my phone. It'll pop up in my email. Answering Legal allows me to have a personal life, a more balanced life, and it also helps me to be a better attorney. It saves time, it helps you grow your practice without you even realizing it. Getting started with Answering Legal is the best thing that we've ever done. It pays off in spades. It's been amazing. I couldn't live without them, <laughs> really. Um, what are some things that lawyers can at least be mindful of to sort of ensure that they're not like setting themselves back uh, in terms of like organic Google presence? Yeah. Well, I think, um, you know, there's certain things that lawyers will probably never understand, right? And that's the technical components of SEO, right? Mm -hmm. I think you just kind of need to kind of realize that don't do that yourself, like have somebody that can kind of take care of that for you. Um, but don't ignore it either, right? Because if you ignore it, if you do everything else right, if you're publishing content, you're getting links back to your website, but you're completely ignoring the technical components of SEO, you know, there could be things that are kind of impeding your ability to rank from a technical perspective, right? So you want to have somebody that kind of comes in and looks at your website maybe once a month, once every other month, just to make sure that you're compliant. Um, you know, so I'd say that's one of the most important things that I see uh, attorneys kind of neglect is they think they can do SEO themselves. And for the most part, you can, right? You can go out and get links and you can go out and write content and that's all fine. But the technical stuff, you know, you probably don't have the skill set to do that. Um, and then the other thing I would just say is, uh, you know, content is a, is a strong part of uh, SEO. I mean, Google's a blank search engine if there's nobody that's publishing content, right? So the more that you publish content, the more that you get rewarded by Google. You know, they do have that freshness algorithm. And so mm -hmm. they, they want to reward websites that are contributing on a regular basis. Um, you know, and so just kind of think about like, what are the people that are looking for you? What are they searching for? You know, go back into some of your chats, listen to some phone calls, you know, and then just kind of go in and start publishing content. Um, and if you're like me and you don't like to write a lot of content, um, you know, just go in and, and start to, you know, record videos answering the questions and then get those videos transcribed. And then you have a lot of content that you can publish on your website that way. I, I like to joke around that. Joe, my my co my colleague and I, coworker, same thing. Yeah, uh, we got really tired of writing content, and so they put me on camera, and now I just talk my content out into whoever will listen. Yeah, um, nothing wrong with that. So I have a funny. I, I tell you, I love funny stories, man. I was mm -hmm. on Twitter today, and I follow uh, John John Mew, John yeah. Mueller, the uh, the liaison from Google for uh, SEOs, mm -hmm. and he had favorited a tweet that was sort of making fun of somebody who didn't understand techni technical SEO. And uh, for all my technical people out there, the joke was that somebody put an H2 class as H1. Mm -hmm. So it was like H2 class and then colon H1. I thought it was hysterical because I was like, <laughs> just the ways that you'll try to, to game the system. Like, you don't think anybody knows what that is. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's my oh. that's my my nerd technical joke of the day. And I actually just saw that this morning too. So that's that's which fresh. probably went over the head of everybody listening except me. <laughs> like, you know, I mean you have to know technical SEO to get that joke. Uh, maybe there's like some <laughs> law firm marketers out there trying to learn something from you uh, on the show. And I and love they, it. I appreciate it. Right. I thought it was so funny, man. I'm looking yeah. at that like if somebody really tried that, good for you, man. I really <laughs> I get I wish you the best. Um yeah. So we're talking about um, technical SEO and, and how lawyers are never really going to learn the technical aspect, just the same way that I'm never going to learn how to like go to court and, and represent a client or, or, or like litigate anything. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So they're, they're not going to really be able to understand how to evaluate their current SEO. Do you have any, it's not like tips. Do you have any advice on how to help lawyers understand where they're at in terms of SEO and, yeah. and what they should be doing? Yeah. You know, to be honest with you, invest 25 bucks and buy the book. 
um, you know, because I, I spent like an entire year um, documenting how to evaluate, you know, what would be good SEO. And I think if, uh, if those that are listening just bought it, you know, Law Firm SEO, you can go to Amazon. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm not, believe me, I'm not getting rich from selling books, um, <laughs> especially if I'm writing such a niche category like mm-hmm. Law Firm SEO. Um, you know, I'm genuinely kind of uh, trying to give back and, and truly educating and empowering attorneys to uh, make better decisions with their, with their marketing, specifically digital marketing, um, but also uh, hold uh, those that are doing it for them accountable. It is a well-targeted title tag, though. I will give you that. Yes. <laughs> um, so most lawyers... I would, I'm going to say most because I, I have had conversations to the contrary, but most lawyers understand that their website uh, plays a big role in, in the success of their SEO. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk about that a little bit more and, and sort of delve into that and, and kind of explain to us the, the importance of having a, a technically sound website? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's an, it's an asset. It really is a business asset that you're building, you know, when you are investing into your SEO, right. And what is SEO? SEO is, is comprised of, you know, the look and feel of your website, right. Um, you know, that's your image, that's your, uh, your brand, I guess, um, the content that you're publishing on your website that becomes your voice, you know, in, in the market, um, you know, and those that are talking about you, right, uh, online and, and mentioning you and linking back to you, that's how the website gains popularity. And that's how the content that you're writing and the image that you have starts to get uh, more views is by those that are kind of talking about you online, right? Um, and the more that you uh, continue to invest in content and building out your your popularity by getting others to talk about you, um, the higher your website starts to rank for some of the terms that are important to your business, uh, the more phone calls that you generate as a result of, of those activities, right? And the more business that you get as a result of it. Um, but what some people neglect to understand is that, you know, at the end of the day, that is your asset, right? And now business brokers are looking at tools like SEMrush and Ahrefs to understand, you know, how valuable your asset is, right? So if you've invested in SEO for 10 years um, and your site is ranking for 40,000 keywords now and it's generating all this traffic, right? That just makes your business that much more valuable when you go to sell it, if you do try to sell it too, right? So um, long-term it's it's an investment, um, but it doesn't, you know, it's not something that just happens in a month, right? Um, it's like, if you want to be healthy, right, you don't go to the gym on Monday and eat healthy on Tuesday and be like, I'm done, you know, I'm healthy now, right? No, it's just a, it's a I constant wish. thing, right? Yeah. So I ate Thai food today for lunch, so I'm, uh, I'm not feeling healthy. I'm supposed to be like working out, building towards, you know, like my, uh, my uh-huh. summer, my summer bod goals, summer bod, right? It's not working out for me, <laughs> man. It's not working out. Um, I do. I like that. I like that analogy though, right? Is like, all the work that you do on your website sort of gets, um, I mean, positive work, right? We're, we're talking about like white hat, white glove type type stuff for lawyers. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, you sort of bank it away, right? And, and the more you store in the bank, the bigger the account gets and the more you can rely on it uh, in the future. Yes. So I, we were talking about this just, just before with, with freshness, right? And I think that freshness is a, is a component of what content marketing is about when it, when it, as it pertains to SEO, but Mm -hmm. you know, they've been saying this for a decade now, uh, content is king. Is that still, do you, do you still buy into content is king when it comes to SEO? And, and if so, is blogging still one of the main, like, uh, driving forces of that for law firms? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the biggest case studies that we have um, are those of which that really invested heavy into content. Um, for example, we work with Ben Crump 
Um, he's a civil rights lawyer. Um, he represented uh, the families of George Floyd and Trayvon Martin, right? And he's- I knew that sounded familiar to me. Yep. Um, and so uh, about two years ago, he didn't really have an SEO strategy, right? He had a website that had maybe like 15 pages of content, right? Um, and we started to go aggressive and we started to publish 400,000 words of content every single month. And we weren't using like any AI at all. We were like handwriting all of that content each and every month. Um, you know, fast forward two years, now this site ranks for like 40,000 keywords. It has an SEM rush value of like $8 million per month. And, um, you know, so, you know, that, you know, SEO is really theoretical or practical, you know, and we like to look at the practical side of SEO based on some of the case studies that we've developed. And that right there just kind of proves, you know, that's just one case study, but that proves that content is king, right? If you do it correctly. Um, with regards to blogging, um, you know, I think blogging is more of like a term from like the 90s. Um, uh, you know, it's it's okay to blog, um, but blogging is, you know, that used to be how you basically update uh, like a WordPress, right? Because WordPress was originally kind of like a blog, right? And if you wanted to publish content, you had to publish a new blog post, right? Nowadays, it doesn't have to be in the form of blog. You know, if you set up your website correctly, you can have an FAQ silo where you're writing FAQs. You know, you can have a, another silo that has all of your different practice areas. You can have, you know, I mean, as long as you're publishing content on a regular basis, that's perfectly fine. Like Hennessy, our, our agency, we do have a blog um, and we do an amazing doc job with our blog post. Um, but that's really like our outlook on the world. Um, and we've got interesting posts about some of the conferences that we attended or, you know, hey, we just, uh, you know, had a, a change in leadership here, you know, so like it's more, it's more of internal communication that we kind of share with the world. But blogging is not necessarily like the secret to SEO anymore. I love that answer. It's you can blog. It's cool. It might work for you if and if it does, that's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. But there's there's a lot more ways now to create content that uh, that users can be interested in uh, that can ultimately help your website more. So if our listeners want to hear more from you, from Jason, from Hennessy, uh, yeah. where should they go? Sure. Uh, you know, you can go to Hennessy.com, H-E-N-N-E-S-S-E-Y. You got to put that E in there. Otherwise, you're going to get some good cognac, which isn't a bad thing. Um, or you can also uh, follow me on uh, on Instagram or Twitter. It's just at Jason Hennessy, H-E-N-N-E-S-S-E-Y. Uh, for anybody who's listening or watching, all that stuff is going to be linked in the description anyway. Um, but just make yeah. sure that you... And you yeah. And just go get the book. That's the biggest thing is, you know, if you're, if you've already made it this far and you've invested, you know, the past 30 minutes into listening to this conversation, you probably have an interest in this. You didn't click away, which is good. Thank you for that. Nick and I both appreciate it. Um, but yeah, go, uh, go invest 25 bucks into buying the book. And I guarantee that if you read the book and you actually start to implement some of the things that I mentioned in the book, it'll probably be worth more than a hundred thousand dollars to your firm. I couldn't agree more. So, uh, Jason, I'd like to thank you for joining me on the show today. And again, I want to thank all of our listeners. We hope you enjoyed this conversation and we will be back with more episodes of everything except the law in 2022. That sounds crazy to say out loud. Mm -hmm. Uh, be sure to check out previous episodes of our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, and the Answering Legal YouTube channel. See you next time, everyone.